Remember that the difference between consonants and vowels is that to make a consonant you have to make some kind of an obstruction in the vocal tract, while for vowels there is no obstruction. This means that the properties we use to describe consonants, place of articulation and manner of articulation, won't work for vowels because these properties refer to where and how the obstruction is made. If there is no obstruction, you are not bringing two articulators together to make that obstruction. And so there is no place in which they are brought together, place of articulation, and no specific way in which they are brought together, manner of articulation. Instead, we describe vowels in terms of three other properties how high up in the mouth the tongue is when we make the vowel, whether the tongue is pushed forwards or backwards in the mouth, and whether the lips are rounded, i.e. making an O shape or unrounded. The last property that we use to describe consonants, voiced versus voiceless, can also be used for vowels. But because vowels are nearly always voiced, and in English they always are, we usually don't bother saying this. Height. The height of a vowel refers to how high up in the mouth the highest point of the tongue is when we make the vowel. Say e as in bead, e, e as in bed, e, a as in bad, a, a as in car, a. Can you feel your tongue gradually moving downwards? Did you notice that you had to open your mouth a little more for each vowel? For E, the tongue is e. high up in the mouth. Then it moves a little lower down for each vowel. When we describe Australian English vowels, we normally use three degrees of tongue height, high, mid and low. If a vowel is high, that means the tongue is high up in the mouth when we make it. If it is mid, it means the tongue is neither very high nor very low. If it is low, it means that the tongue is low down in the mouth when we make the vowel. Phoneticians often distinguish between four degrees of heights, high, mid-high, mid-low, and low. Backness. We don't just move our tongue up and down to make different vowels. We also move it forwards and backwards. Say the vowels in peat and put a few times, e. one after the other. Feel Ooh. what your tongue is doing. You should feel it being pushed forward for Pete and pulled backward for put. The vowel in Pete is a front vowel and the vowel in put is a back vowel. As well as having the tongue pushed to the front or to the back of the mouth, it is also possible to have it sitting in the middle of the mouth. For example, for the vowel in heard. Try saying that. You should feel that your tongue is neither being pushed forward uh. nor pulled backwards, but is sitting in the middle. We say that this vowel is a central vowel, so we distinguish between three degrees of backness, front, central and back. Notice that we are using two different terms for when the tongue is in a middle position. Mid refers to tongue height. It means that the tongue is neither very high nor very low. Central refers to tongue backness. It means the tongue is neither to the front nor to the back. So if a vowel is high and central, it means the tongue is high up but neither front nor back. If a vowel is mid and front, the tongue is pushed forward but is neither high nor low. If a vowel is mid and central, the tongue is sitting right in the middle of the mouth, neither front nor back, neither high nor low. Rounding. Producing vowels involves our lips as well as our tongue. When we make a vowel, our lips can be either rounded or unrounded. Say the vowels in beat and boot a few times. Can you feel your lips making an O shape for boot and spreading out for beat? The vowel in boot is a rounded vowel and the vowel in beat is an unrounded vowel. Tense versus lax. Some vowels are quite close to each other in height, backness and rounding, but still not quite the same. For example, the vowel in beat, which we transcribe in IPA as I, 
is a high front e. unrounded vowel. The vowel in bit, which we transcribe as capital I roughly, is also a high front unrounded e. vowel, but they don't sound the same. What's the difference? In fact, even though they are both quite far to the front, I is a little bit more central than E, but they're still quite close together, and descriptions like a little bit central aren't very accurate. Instead, we use the terms tense and lax. They are supposed to indicate that the muscles of the tongue are more tensed up when producing tense vowels than when producing lax vowels. When people have tried to test this, though, they haven't actually found much of a difference in muscle tension for the two kinds of vowels. Nevertheless, it is a useful way of making the distinction, so we will say that E is a tense high front unrounded vowel and E is a lax high front unrounded vowel. We usually only specify that a vowel is tense or lax if there is another similar vowel that we need to distinguish it from. The E sound in uh. B is a tense mid front unrounded vowel, but there is no lax front mid unrounded vowel in Australian English. So when we talk about the E uh. vowel, we can just say that it is mid front unrounded, since there is no other mid front unrounded vowel. This is enough to make it clear which vowel we are talking about. The schwa. There is a vowel sound which is very frequent in English but which does not correspond to a letter of the alphabet. This is the first vowel in words like above or together. Try saying these words a few times and listen to the first vowel. You don't actually say an a uh sound in above or an o uh sound in together. Instead, the vowel is a kind of u uh sound. Uh. This is the lax mid central unrounded vowel and it's so common that it has its own name. It's called schwa. In IPA, it's written like an upside down backwards E. The schwa is in a sense the nothing vowel. It is not high, not low, not front, not back, not rounded. It just sits right in the middle of the mouth and it takes very little effort to make it. Just open your mouth a little, don't move your tongues or your lips and make a sound. Schwa only occurs in unstressed syllables in English. Stress is the place in a word where we put a little extra effort in when we say the word. We may say one syllable a little louder and with a slightly higher pitch than the rest of the word. In the word better, the first syllable is stressed. In the word pretend, the second syllable is stressed. If a syllable is stressed, the vowel in it is never a schwa. When you are transcribing speech, don't be tricked by the spelling of a word. Remember the schwa doesn't have a letter in the spelling system of English. Listen to how the vowel is actually pronounced. If it is unstressed and you can't quite decide what it should be, it may be schwa. Vowels of Australian English. This diagram shows the vowels of Australian English and how they are transcribed in IPA. The chart is meant to be a simplified representation of the mouth. The front of the mouth is to the left and the back of the mouth is to the right. So the front vowels will be on the left hand side of the diagram and back vowels will be on the right hand side. High vowels are at the top and low vowels at the bottom. Rounded vowels are in red and unrounded vowels are in blue. So we have E, e. as in beat which is high front unrounded and tense I as in bit e. which is high front unrounded and lax. We have e as in uh. bet which is mid front and unrounded. We have a as in bat uh. which is low front and unrounded. We have e uh, the schwa as in above uh. which is mid central unrounded and lax. We have e uh, as in bert uh. which is mid, central, unrounded and tense. We have a ah, ah. as in part, which is low, central and unrounded. We have oo as in boot, which is back, high, rounded and tense. We have o as Ooh. in put, which is back, high, rounded and lax. 
We have oh. or as in bought, which is mid, back, and rounded. We have a uh, uh. as in but, which is low, back, and unrounded. And o uh, as in pot, which is low, back, and rounded. Until now, we've only looked at vowels where the tongue stays in the same position the whole time while we're saying them. But sometimes we can start saying a vowel with the tongue and lips in one position and then move them while we are saying the vowel so that they are in a different position when we finish saying the vowel than when we started saying it. This kind of vowel which changes its position while it is being pronounced is called a diphthong. Diphthongs are normally written with two letters in English spelling and in IPA. They are written with two symbols the symbol for the vowel where it starts and the one for the vowel where it ends up. These are the diphthongs of Australian English. I as in pie, a as in bay, oi as in boy, ow as in how, ear as in deer, air as in hair, ua as in cure, and o as in low.